Thank you, and I want to applaud uh, Representative McAdams uh, for his work introducing this bill and to the Science Committee uh, for putting together a strong bipartisan reauthorization for DOE solar energy research programs. I represent Golden, Colorado in the National Renewable Energy Lab. NREL is the premier energy efficiency and renewable energy lab in the world. The lab first opened as the Solar Energy Research Institute in 1977 after passage of the Solar Energy Research, Development, and Demonstration Act of 1974. And time to time, I put up this chart. Back when NREL was opened, uh, it was $76 per watt for solar, uh, silicon-based solar. Today, it's 30 cents. So there has been tremendous development and tremendous strides uh, made in connection with solar research, solar energy research and the opportunity that it provides uh, for us to the energy grid. Since it's opened its doors, NREL has pushed the boundaries of our understanding of solar energy technologies and helped dramatically reduce costs of manufacturing, installation, and integration of solar technology onto the grid. And that's why I'm pleased the Science Committee is taking steps to modernize and reauthorize DOE's solar research programs. My amendment is very simple. It clarifies the research areas in the bill to ensure low-cost, thin-film solar technologies are included in DOE's research. NREL has excelled at material science and understanding how new materials like perovskite can be used to open new doors for commercial applications of solar technologies. One company taking advantage of these opportunities is Ascent Solar, which is in my district. They manufacture flexible solar panels in the United States with a wide range of applications, and they partner with NREL and DOE to better understand the fundamental material science and the impacts of various techniques and processes on efficiency and reliability. I'd say to my friend from Oklahoma, uh, based upon his opening, that we need to continue this research, and I appreciate uh, his desire to keep an eye on the budget. We all must do that. But I would say to my friend that particularly in solar and wind, it isn't what's the percentage above uh, what it was in 2019, it's whether we were underfunded in these areas to begin with, which we have been because of the state of our budget over the last number of years. And I'd say to my friend that we're going to be looking at a defense bill of $750 billion for one year. This addition under this bill, the authority would be 750 years worth of that. And as to the tax cut we had a couple years ago, where it hits the deficit for about $2 trillion, that's 2,000 years. So to my friend, I appreciate his uh, budget hawk approach. But here we've underfunded from the beginning. We've seen tremendous strides. And this country faces uh, some real issues with its climate. And solar is one of the best places we can make uh, advances in terms of energy production, as well as maintain, dispensing with pollution into our atmosphere.